Hi, I'm Vlad Janusiewicz, and on behalf of my colleagues and co-authors from Medical Center for Postgraduate Education in Warsaw and Pomeranian Medical University in Szczecin in Poland, I would like to give you a brief outline of our study entitled The Endoscopist's Biopsy Rate as a Quality Indicator for Outpatient Gastroscopy, a multi-center cohort study with validation, which was just recently published in Gastrointestinal Endoscopy. Let me start with some general information on quality indicators in endoscopy. As you are all aware, endoscopy plays a pivotal role in diagnosing cancer and premalignant conditions within both the upper and lower GI tract. And despite the overall high accuracy in cancer detection, it is still a highly operated dependent procedure with a miss rate of approximately 10% of upper GI cancers and somewhere between 2-9% to of lower GI cancers. And because this is such a subjective examination, we would like to somehow measure the performance of endoscopists so that we could compare them between each other. Such measures of performance are broadly termed quality indicators. Ideally, quality indicators should be quantifiable, reproducible and validated so that we can compare them in different institutions in different parts of the world. We also want the quality indicators to be meaningful and related with important outcomes such as cancer detection or high-risk lesion detection or more importantly the rate of missed cancers, also called interval cancers. The importance of quality indicators has already been shown in the field of colonoscopy. For example, our group has previously shown that one of the parameters used in the setting of colorectal cancer screening, the adenoma detection rate, ADR, is inversely associated with the interval colorectal cancer incidence and mortality. This is just one of many quality indicators that have been described for colonoscopy. Others that immediately comes into mind include polyp detection rate, advanced adenoma detection rate, withdrawal time, cecum intubation rate, and so on and so on. Unlike in the field of colonoscopy, there are very few performance measures for upper GI endoscopy, and most of them are based on low quality data, there is usually lack of validation, and rarely these parameters are associated with patient-oriented outcomes. The objective of our study was to fill this existing gap with high-quality evidence for new performance measures in the upper GI endoscopy. Because the diagnosis of precancerous conditions and early cancers in conventional endoscopy relies on biopsy sampling of suspicious areas within the GI tract, we hypothesized that within a group of competent endoscopists, the rate of obtaining biopsy specimens during endoscopy broadly reflects the number of detected abnormalities, somehow as with polyp detection rate in colonoscopy. We considered this as a potentially objective and a reproducible quality indicator for routine outpatient gastroscopy. We have performed this multi-center study analyzing nearly 30,000 endoscopy reports and histology data from two high-volume geographically distinct endoscopy units. All patients were followed using the National Cancer Registry to identify missed gastric cancers diagnosed between one month and three years after a negative gastroscopy, which is basically showing no evidence of cancer. We developed a quality indicator called endoscopist's biopsy rate, EBR, which is simply defined as the proportion of gastroscopies with at least one biopsy obtained to all gastroscopies. This can be easily retrieved by analyzing the ICD-9 coding as endoscopies with biopsies have a different procedural code than those without biopsies. Easy as that. Our initial finding was that the EBR parameter 
was highly variable among endoscopists, particularly between 22.4% up to 65.8%. A median value was 33.8%. By the quartile ranges of EBR, we have divided endoscopists into four groups with low, medium, high, and very high range of EBR. We have shown that endoscopies from the medium, high, and very high group of EBR are characterized by an increasingly higher rate of gastric premalignant condition detection as compared to low EBR endoscopists. And moreover, the EBR parameter was inversely associated with the rate of missed gastric cancers. This data was then validated using the very same threshold values for EBR parameter in an independent cohort, and the correlation was still maintained. Overall, there was a strong relationship between EBR parameter and the rate of gastric premalignant condition detection. There are several limitations to our study that needs to be emphasized. First of all, this was a retrospective study. The usefulness of EBR requires further evaluation, preferably in prospective trials, to determine the most accurate range of EBR value that would represent the highest diagnostic yield and the lowest cost burden at the same time, as we know that increasing EBR values are associated with an increasing number of negative, negative biopsy results and hence costs. Although this was a multi-center study, it was still confined to a single country of Poland, and further data from other worldwide centers would be appreciated in terms of validation of our parameter. We are also aware that, just like with the polyp detection rate in colonoscopy, the EBR parameter might be susceptible to gaming. Knowing about the EBR parameter being monitored may encourage endoscopists to take more random biopsy samples just to boost their EBR parameter without really influencing the patient outcomes. Nevertheless, in conclusions, we have described a new quality indicator, EBR, which we believe is a parameter that within a group of comparably experienced endoscopists correlates with a detection rate of mucosal abnormalities within the GI tract. We have shown that this parameter is highly variable among endoscopies, and we have shown that it is correlated with important patient-oriented outcomes, such as premalignant condition detection rate and the rate of missed gastric cancers. From this point, I would like to thank all the co-authors and friends, Paulina Wieszczy, Andrzej Białek, Katarzyna Karpińska, Jakub Szlak, Jakub Szymonik, Maciej Rupiński, Andrzej Mruz, Jarosław Reguła, and Michał Kaminski. I hope you find this paper interesting. Many thanks and goodbye.